Hello everyone, welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how you can create this donut chart or pie chart if you will uh, using D3 library. D3 library is a very powerful library to create visualizations in general in the web. Obviously there are so many other libraries but D3 has proven to be kind of one of the top leading ones to create visualization on the web. So let's get started. What we're going to build is this kind of donut chart or pie chart uh, in D3 library. First things first, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to kotus.com in CodeNest online editor and I'm going to create a SVG element in the HTML. Basically this is going to be the holder uh, of the chart that we're going to make uh, or, SV or D3 is going to add stuff to it. So the next thing we want to do is give it a width and height. So let's give it a width of 400 uh, and a height of 400 as well. And as always, I'm going to CSS and style this SVG to be center. It could be anywhere in a card or in a div in your page. But in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to put it in the center. So I'm just going to put a position absolute. And then uh, I'm going to set the left to be 50%, uh, top to be 50%, and then transform, translate, minus 50%, uh, minus 50%. Um, could give it a background of some, you know, hollow kind of gray, so you can see it uh, right in the page. Next thing we want to do, we need to add the D3 library to our page. So if you go to the D3 web page, here down here, you can obviously go ahead and figure out how things happen. But I'm just going to copy the link to the library and clicking on this gear icon, go to JavaScript and paste it over here as a library included in our project. Uh, in your own web page, you usually add a script tag uh, at the end of your body element. So now that we have the D3 library, I'm going here and I'm going to just create some dummy data that I want to use to generate this kind of chart. So this is going to be like a JavaScript object, but you can it can come actually from a backend, you know, that you have. So I'm just going to create a data uh, and I'm just going to add an array of objects. Let's just start with, let's say, Chrome. Uh, let's say it has a value of 10. Uh, this can be like, the you know, the number of times in this this uh, browser you know users use to I don't know visit your website for example so I'm just going to uh, create a Safari one uh, I'm just going to give it a value of 20 let's create two more uh, for IE uh, let's say IE is 30 and then let's say you have Firefox and then the value is I don't know like 40 these values are obviously not realistic uh, but for the purpose of this tutorial. Next thing we want to do, uh, by the way, in order to use D3, you need to know a little bit of JavaScript, a little bit of CSS, and also kind of know the concept of SVG. But if you don't know, I'm just going to talk a little bit briefly about those. So first thing first, we want to create, uh, we want to have a reference to that SVG we created. And using D3, D3 has this select method on it. So I can pass in my SVG. Uh, that would be, uh, the sort of access to our SVG in the HTML. Then I'm just going to get those width and height that we had, uh, that we defined uh, in, in our HTML. So I'm just going to say width. And then I can get the same thing here for the height. So I'm just going to set it to height. So these are, these are basically like 400 and 400. Uh, and then uh, I want to define a radius. So knowing that I have 400 and 400, maybe I can define a radius for our pie chart to be 200. We can obviously change it later on. I'm just going to format it a little bit. Uh, all right. So now that we have access to our SVG, what I'm going to do, if you look at here, we have a bunch of arcs uh, that are grouped together. So in SVG to group sort of elements, SVG elements, uh, usually path elements, uh, you can use a tag called G. So I'm just going to create a G tag. Uh, I'm just going to create a constant called G. Then I say append to my SVG a G tag, but also I want to set the attribute transform on it 
to be uh let's say uh i'm just gonna yeah resize this a little bit i just want to translate it to uh the width divided by two and then the height divided by two right this basically means that the g element will be in the center of this svg right so now we have that in order to create these arcs over here i need to use a function called uh, pi in d3 so i'm just going to create like let's say we call it path uh, or let's call it pi actually so pi then i use d3.pi then I say value, and then I pass it a lambda, and here I just do d dot value. So what this pi function does is that based on the data that will be passed to it later on, it comes to the value and it gets these values to generate the starting angle and the ending angle of these arcs, right? So that you know. Uh, we also want to have some colors, right? Uh, in order to create colors in D3, uh, I'm just going to create a constant called color. D3 has this method called scale ordinal, and it actually accepts an array. So let's say we have like one, two, three, four. I'm just going to give it some colors like red, blue, uh, maybe like green, and then gray, right? Uh, what it does really is that based on the values that gets passed to it, it creates a range, right? And based on the values that it has, it selects one of these elements or one of these colors later on uh, for the color of the pies. It's going to open up a little bit. The next method that or the next function we need to use uh, on D3 is a is called D3.arc. And that's the one that we create for the actual arcs that we have over here. So it needs like a outer radius and an inner radius. So I initially start with a pie chart, not a donut chart. Uh, so here uh, I need to define an outer radius and this will be our radius that we define up here. And then I set the inner radius to be zero, right? So now we have our arc over here as well. Now that we have defined these three things over here, we go ahead and render our pie chart. And to be able to do that, I'm just going to create the G that we created over here. I'm just going to say select all arc. So I could select all the elements with the class arc. And then the data that I want to pass to create those is actually the pi method that we created here. And I pass the data, right? And then I enter into that each of those arcs that we have uh, in, in the G element. I enter and I append another G. And then I set, and I set the uh, attribute of class to be arc. So just to understand what the selector does is that having this G element, it tries to select all the arcs and pass that data that we have to generate the pies. It enter in each of those arcs and then appends the G. And then if you want to read it really, it's really like we're creating a bunch of G elements with the class arc, which we select here, like here. That's how D3 selects it. And it passes the data using the pi method to get the value of each one. So this is how you read this statement over here. The next thing I'm just going to create like a, I put it in a constant called pies. And now that we have this data, I want to create my, arc, my arcs. And to do that, I'm just going to say pies.append. Now I just append a path to each of those. I Then path is another kind of tag in SVG world, which creates ta uh, path. And then it has an attribute D that you have to uh, define. And this is basically this um, kind of uh, arc that we have defined over here. I can just call it path for for now, and then I just say path. And then the next thing we want to do, we want to give them the colors that they deserve, right? That the, the, the colors that we have defined here. So attribute fill, which is a CSS uh, sort of attribute or a property. Uh, and then we say here, the value that we get, we just say color d.data.value. 
right? So this basically creates uh, the path that we expect to be used on the sort of pies that we generated. So D3 is all about data and the data that gets passed through the elements, right? This is how we create it. So we created a pie, we created an arc, we created like a bunch of arcs using this, and then we basically um, uh, created each of those, we assigned it to pies, we append a path to each of those and give the attribute to the actual path here. And then we fill those data with this color that we want. So just want to make sure I did everything correctly. If I open up the console over here on the error tag, I'm just going to save it real quick and see if I made any mistake here. Right, it says there is this unexpected token over here, and I'm just going to visualize and see how I can find that. So here, uh, we do have our SVG uh, G generated, and I have the translate here, so that's fine. We have the D3 here, just want to make sure all the data that I have is correct as well. So here, I need to have a value. And there you go, that was the error. So now you can see that we actually have a nice pie chart in the page. And obviously you can go ahead and change the colors to some other colors that you like. Next thing I want to do, obviously a pie chart without labels doesn't make sense. And we have these names over here. So in order to put that the same way we created a path over here that we utilize to create the arcs, we use the same thing to put the labels, right? So I'm just going to create a label over here. And instead here I have radius, but let's say I, I'm just going to add radius minus 90. And you'll see what happens here. Now, just to, it's a very simple thing to add text to each of these. So I'm just going to say pies, append, and here instead of path, I'm going to add a text. And then I'm just going to say text. I have the D, I have passing a lambda, and then it, the value name is actually over here. So it's text D, D data dot name, which represents the name over here. So that's great, but we need to position them, right? And in order to position them, again, I'm going to use attribute transform. And then here, uh, I have another function, which gets the data that we have. And here, I'm just going to say, uh, let's translate them. But to, to, to translate them, I'm going to use a method on the label that we created up here, and that is called centroid, right? And then I pass the D over here. So basically here, it gets the text. It appends the text. Let's just cre create that. There you go. So now you can see that you actually have this Firefox over here. Um, let's see why it didn't go ahead and create the other ones. So we have D. Uh, let me just move this so that it's more readable if I put it over here. So I use attribute transform. That's correct. It gets a D and then it returns a translate. As you see over here, and then it just do label centroid. Centroid and then pass the D element over here. And that's about it. So let's see why this didn't take effect. So definitely something is wrong over here. So the text itself works, but this transform doesn't like the idea. So let's, for the sake of it, I'm just going to create a function over here instead of using a lambda. And I'm just going to do this and copy this over here. And then I'm just going to return this value from here. So now we have a proper, so I'm just going to go to the console again and see our oh, label centroid is not a function. Great. So the reason for that, let's see why. So the label centroid is not a function. So you have a label. Let me just double check that I included the correct. Yes, I did it. So I have the label here. And then this is a D3 uh, arc with an outer radius, which I pass the radius and then an inner radius. So that's correct. But it says it doesn't have method centroid on it, which is super weird. 
we have console let me see what i have done wrong here um d3 arc outer radius inner radius so that's correct i do have a radius defined over here so that shouldn't be any problem so i pies append text and then i use uh, so let me see if i use this function here instead will that help us I'm just going to copy this and paste it over here. Right. So I think the problem is that here uh, uh, I made a mistake in using the uh, function that generates the uh, the lambda function that generates this. There's like this centroid over here. So I had to pass it like this. So as you can see, you can play around with this uh, 90 over here. So if I say 10, you'll see that they go outer. And if I say 200, they go inner. So it depends on how you want to uh, align them. So that's going to be 90. And then I'm going to go to the CSS and remove the background over here. So now you can see that you actually literally have a pie chart that basically represents the data that you have over here. Uh, also, one thing I want to mention is that pi, you can actually add a sort method to it because Originally, it actually tries to sort the elements over here, but I don't want to. So I want to have Chrome, Safari, IE, and Firefox. And yeah, there you go. You have a pie chart created in D3 using a bunch of methods. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And let me know what you think. Next time, I'm going to create another tutorial creating a world map. Uh, and yeah, stay tuned. Have a great day and night and goodbye.